First time I started carrying a gun, I think I was 12. And uh, 20, 25 automatic. It was just real little. I, it was so little, I'd be walking around with it all day, every day in my hand, and you wouldn't even know I had it. We live in a dream that should have never been. There's no rest out here. You wake up with gang culture on your mind. You wake up saying that I might not make it through the day. No matter who you are, if you live in Compton, one way or another, you're affected by the gang activity, the gang violence. You know, you might feel like you're not affected, but in one way or another, you're affected. I was for real. You can kill me, I can kill you. You know, I got shot three times in the streets of Compton. So at the end, I can be killed and you can be killed. That's why I love the mayor so much. She took her time out to come see about us when we were thrown away. Even to this day, we were thrown away. She came and said, get everybody together and let's do something special. I believe perception is more powerful than reality. And when people think of Compton, they think of gangster rap, they think of gang members, they think of bloods and cribs, they think of violence. And it was imperative for me to really focus on getting to the root of what people think of and then also making sure that we can eradicate those issues in order to, to really build a better Compton. My mother grew up in a Compton that was amazing and awesome. She went fishing, she rode bikes, she was a, a child that was free and had a great childhood. And um, later growing up and when she became an adult, her mother was murdered in the city and she moved out um, of the city of Compton and raised my brother and I in a very similar environment. I knew that in order for Compton to have an opportunity to transform and to recover, that we needed a great leader. And so I approached certain people that I thought had good leadership qualities to run for office, and each person pointed the finger back at me. And I decided, and just from being raised by my mother, that you know you never point out problems without being ready to offer a solution. And so I decided that I would run for mayor. My focus was getting together the gang members and, and really being able to identify, you know, what are the issues? Can we have peace? Can we transform our community for the betterment of our families and for our future? And so that was really the, the main focus of getting people together is to have peace, but also to be able to um, influence the power of perception and to dissuade it from where it was 25 years ago and to be able to carve out a new place today. I would love for my legacy to be that I was a woman of compassion, that I came to serve and not be served, and that I was truly concerned about those that society considers to be the least of those, and that I truly was able to restore hope and to encourage a movement of people to take back their communities and to really stand for their families and for their neighborhood. for our kids, our youth, to have understanding that they can do what they want to do and don't be criticized for it. I just want to see the little kids grow up. You know, when I was growing up, we used to, we could stay outside, summertime, we could stay outside 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 at night, be all out in the streets playing, every, no problem. The murder rate then went down 30, 35 to 40 percent. Kids at the park playing. Kids going to school without an incident. She have done this. She have really helped us move forward. One day we all be gone, but this legacy will live on. This understanding what she have done. So if I call her brave, she be our brave. Asia, thank you so much. You may be seated. Before I interview Asia, I want to take a moment. Um, one thing, if you know anything about Influence Church, we believe in our city. We believe in women in leadership. We believe that you and I need to be responsible for our cities, 
for our churches, our homes, and our businesses. And our church has been very involved in our city. Um, matter of fact, I think we have a few pictures I want to show you in a few moments. One thing we do as women of influence is we did a toy drive with the Boys and Girls Club of Anaheim and provided 123 children, homeless children, a lot of them, bicycles. We will partner again with our city on July 17th, which is National Serve Day. And I'm going to ask you to honor with me our city councilwoman, Chris Murray, as she comes to the stage for a moment. I love powerful women. You know, one thing we say around here, if you know anything about women of influence, it's smart, what is it? Hang around smarter people. So I'm feeling kind of smart here right now. One thing we do is we believe, as I said, in our city, and I wanted to honor Chris Murray. She has stood strong for the city of Anaheim, and we are, I believe, the largest city in Orange County. We've got the Ducks and the Angels and Disneyland, and we've got it all. And Chris, um, you are a woman of faith. You are a woman of God. You are a woman that loves our city, and we wanted to honor you. And I want to pray over our city, and then we will come to later. But would you just take a moment and just share quickly to the women, because this is a group of women other than the brave few men that are helping us out tonight. What one word would you give to these women how to step up in leadership and pray for our city? Oh, Whether one in word. Anaheim or not. I know. Well, definitely we need the prayers. Every city does. Um, I guess just faith, you know, really to have it and to exercise it and practice it and be there for each other. So as a community, to always have faith. Amen. Yeah. Amen. But I just, I want to say yeah. a quick word about you, if I may. Uh, Tammy and Phil and everyone at Influence Church just never hesitates to support our city whenever there's a need. And I mean, they're usually thinking about it while I'm trying to pick up the phone, and they're just, they just never hesitate to step up. Uh, whether it's helping the Children Boys and Girls Club, you didn't even mention all the bikes. How many bikes did you guys? 123. Yeah, 123 bikes for kids who have nothing Yeah, this summer. And, um, and working with human trafficking, combating human trafficking, which is a problem in our city, uh, as, as it is all over the state, and um, just always stepping up and loving our city and being thank there you. for us. So God bless you. God bless all of you. Enjoy tonight. And thank you for including me. Thank I look you. forward to praying and about our I'm just going to pray real quickly. If you'd extend a hand both to our city and Compton, God, we just lift these cities up to you. We start this Love Holds conference knowing, Father, that you love our cities. You love our families. And Father, we extend covering of favor and blessing, Father, over Chris and over Asia, Father, as these are powerful women leading our cities. So we pray protection and blessing over both of them in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for your time, Chris. We love you. I love you too. Well, we're going to get to some deep stuff in a few minutes, so don't worry. But um, I feel that as really the founder of Women of Influence, the one thing I really want to do in our mission statement is to empower and equip women to be all God created them to be. And when you come to a Women of Influence conference, what we want to do is we want you to walk away as believers, definitely strengthened in your faith, but challenged to be a woman in society today, to be a woman in your city and in your marketplace, wherever God has you. So when when you come to this church, I believe that you're going to be empowered to go out into the world and make a difference. So Asia, you've been in our church two, three times now, I think. I have, um, and I've been blessed every time. I always look forward to coming back. Well, you, um, you just, we just did an interview a few moments ago, and we're both over there crying because we're just <laughs> believing God for miracles. Yeah. But, but Asia, I want to ask you a few quest questions. First of all, you made history by being the youngest mayor of Compton at 31 years old. Yes. <laughs> Praise God. Yeah. Inside. Tell us a little of that journey. Wow. Um, when I was in college, God had me to change my major, and I prayed and asked God, what did he want me to do with the gifts and talents that he gave me? Open a book of a 1,000 pages, and he took me straight to urban planning. So that was the, really the beginning of God um, just giving me a revelation and information and knowledge. And um, as I was serving in the communities that he dispatched me to, um, I was able to, to pick up so much experience and when he sent me to Compton, I saw so much opportunity and I saw a beautiful city and he just gave me a vision for restoration. And I remember um, I had a dream one night and I saw Compton on a map and it was glowing and there were resources coming from every direction and people were being healed and it was a place of Come blessings. On. And I said, wow, God. And he said, and I want you to lead this effort. And I said, you know, God, why me? I said, you know, you should choose a man. And, um, and I said, and, I, and I'll support him because I've always, my entire career, I was 
the behind the scenes, the strategy person. I did all the work. I loved it. Um, and I just gave God the glory with my life. And he said, no, I, I selected you because of your heart. And he, I said, well, God, I need you to, to lead and direct me. And he always has. And he's, he was so gracious. And he gave me so many confirmations. And when I got to the point to where he gave me the vision, but I had to make that decision to obey him. And I decided, and I had dedicated my life to him years ago, so I, I didn't have a choice. And really, God is so gracious. He won't, he, he'll, he'll make you believe that you have him, but you really don't. Um, <laughs> and um, all right, all right, God, here I am. And he, um, he, he gave us, well, first of all, you touched my husband's heart, and I'm so blessed to have an awesome, awesome man of God. And we are co-laborers. He's my best friend, um, my biggest encourager. And I actually went to him being disobedient a little bit, and I asked him, um, well, why don't you run for mayor, and I'll support you. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, Asia Brown, he said, you were born for this. He said, I got your back. God, he called you to do this. And he said, I'll write you your first check, and he did. And to this day, it's still my largest campaign contribution, so I love you, honey. <laughs> and I, I stepped out on faith, um, but because we have been servants in our community, um, God had had us touch so many hearts and lives. And when I stepped out there, everyone was just ready to help. And it was amazing. I knew nothing about politics. I knew nothing about how to run a campaign. Um, all I knew was God told me to do this. And as I took one day at a time and trusted him, he brought me to um, people of influence. He brought resources. He, he gave me every single thing that I needed. And it just strengthened my faith. And God is just amazing because when you ask him to show you, he will. And he says that in his word that if you ask me, I'll tell you things that you don't know. Yeah, yeah. And he did that for me. And I'm just so grateful. And when he, when I ran, I was running against 12 other people. Um, the, the mayor at the time had been in office for 12 years. The mayor that um, came before him, he was in office for eight years. So these two men had 20 years of a dynasty in the city of Compton. And everyone um, in that political realm, they said, you know, why are you doing this? Who told you to do this? Who sent you here? And I was just telling them, I'm like, well, who, who's sending me here? And I would tell them, well, God sent me here. I mean, he told me to move here, and he told me that I was going to run. And he told me that I would win, and I, and I would tell people this. And they would say, you know, and I would just give God glory. And they would just say, oh, okay. And I said, well, I'm just telling you because he's done everything for me that he told me that he would. So I know that I'm going to win. And, <laughs> and you guys should get on board right Degree now because God is, he, I'm here and he's going to, the whole shift is coming. And to this day, God is awesome because I wasn't supposed to win, obviously. Um, but God had me still be the highest vote getter in that primary. And um, as I went to the runoff, I run by landslide and all glory to God. And so <laughs> that was uh, my journey. And when I tell you that God is awesome because he told me, he said, you know, you're going to go through trial and tribulation. You're going to have warfare and obstacles, but I'm going to bless you and I'm going to lift you up and I'm going to send you before great people. And he's done that. And people just have to understand women of God. You have to understand that there's so much power within us, but the key is obedience, just obedience. When, when you sacrifice and lay down your life for God, there's nothing that he won't do through you. Um, and so that, that's how I got here. <laughs> if that doesn't inspire you, I don't know what does. Let, let's go back a little bit, Asia. Um, you have had such an impact with these two gangs, the Crips and the Bloods. Most of us, when we think of Compton, the only thing we know is the movie Straight Outta Compton. We see, we see the evil, we see these, these gangs, we're, we're afraid to drive through there, Wh whatever your thought is. But that wasn't what you saw. And you saw the heart of God. Mm -hmm. And you built a bridge, built a bridge with both of these gang members to where now you literally are ministering to them and it's changed the whole complexion of your city. Can you tell us a little about that? Um, yes, I, well, one, God gave me a, a really special compassion um, for men um, because usually men have such a, a hard exterior and they don't communicate how they feel. And when I looked at Compton, I asked God to show me what is the spirit that, that looms over this city? And he told me it's rejection. And when you think about rejection, it gives way to so many other things, insecurity, destruction. Um, and it, it's just, it's, it's so, it's so powerful. And so the most powerful 
overcomer of that is love. And so um, I came in the spirit of humility and understanding that, you know what, I, I don't, I'm not an expert in gangs. I know nothing about gangs. Um, I don't know um, about all the dynamics. And I came to them and I asked them to teach me, tell me what, what you need in order to live. And they did, they taught me so much. And in me, um, just being humble and just loving on them, we just forge relationships and you know we went in a battle because it, it's, a, it's a fight for the future of our kids. And um, as we brought everyone together, I asked um, the two gentlemen, um, that's Don and Fred, they actually were rival gang members back in the day. And um, they, had, they used to have animosity even when we were coming together at first. And um, I just told them, I said, you know, what, what are we fighting about? Colors, neighborhoods that no one owns? I mean, who, who owns these streets? And it just really brought it to a simple level, but we were able to bring the men and women together. We just kept meeting. Um, we started meeting every two weeks, and then I had them to form a leadership body, and they started meeting twice a week. Um, and then we did simple things, like we had a softball game, and we brought out everyone's families, and even law enforcement were there, and it was a peaceful day. Um, we also just had vision. What do we want to see for our city? What do we want to do together? And in that, we had one of the biggest obstacles that they identified for me is that, you know, we need opportunities. People have thrown us away, and we still have to survive. That's why they do what they do. And so um, I said, you know, I don't know how God's going to do it, but he's going to open up a way for you guys. And literally three months later, Prop 47 passed. Mm -hmm. And that gave people a new opportunity to um, be able to have their, their records expunged and qualify for jobs that they couldn't qualify for before. And so we created customized job training programs and expungement workshops. And we had mandatory leadership training that was biblically based. Um, we also had um, life skills and all those things um, that really helped to restore um, the core of who they are. And these men, they have different lives now. Many of them are in different careers. They're taking care of their family. They have a, a whole different outlook. And it's all about changing your mind. Yeah. And so our next wave that we're focusing on is really getting to the young people because there's an even greater dynamic where, of course, the men are dealing with rejection. But then the young men, they're also dealing with rebellion and rejection, mm -hmm. where there used to be a hierarchy in gangs. And now the younger generation, they don't even listen to the older generation. Wow. We had an incident just yesterday where a younger, a younger man went off on an older man. And so, and it was devastating to the older man because he was, you know, in gang intervention with us. So this is an ongoing journey. I just ask that you guys pray for us when you think about it. Um, but we're moving forward and God has blessed the city. Um, we even last year, we had um, one of the lowest levels of homicides we've had in over 25 years. It's yeah. been consistent. Um, God is good, glory to God. And to give you guys context, Tammy, since you talked about Straight Outta Compton, when that movie was at the height of its heyday, Compton had about 100 homicides per year. Um, in the last year, we finished at about 14 homicides. Wow. Um, the year before that, we were at 20. Amen. The year before that, I believe it was 16. Um, we had one year of about 37 was the first year that I came in office, but it's continually gotten better. Um, but it, it's all about coming together and love, peace, and, and vision, because people have to see past their circumstances, and when they can see something else that's then what is in front of them, then they can have hope, Amen. and then they can help make them, help them make different decisions. Amen. Amen. Well, a lot of this has to do with leadership. Obviously, God's marked you as a leader, but I believe God's marked all of us yes, as leaders in some capacity. <laughs> you know, there's not this, I, I'll choose that one, that one, that one. God says, I'll choose them. So every woman in here is meant to be a leader. We chatted a few moments ago about uh, women in leadership and how do we balance this between this tug of war between men and women? And especially with things like we talk often in our office here with Women of Influence, what stand do we want to take on the whole Me Too movement, women's movement, women's empowerment movement? We're going to be women who we want to empower you as women. But how do we balance that with our counterpart men without coming across trying to belittle men but stand in power as a woman? You obviously are the mayor of Compton. How do you work with your counterpart in a, in a humble way and yet understand your role as a leader? I think as believers, we are required to remember that the battle is not against flesh or blood. It's, it's principalities, Amen. powers, and rules of darkness that sit in high places. And so when we think about uh, what we're talking about with Me Too and Time's Up is oppression. We're talking about systematic oppression. That's and it. so we have to speak to the spirit of oppression and combat that in the spirit. That's good. Right there. Men are not the enemy. They are not. 
And, that's, and, and that is really a device of the, of the enemy to make us believe that men are against us because God, there, there's a Godhead, obviously, and there, there's a triune God, but God, there's the, the masculine God and there's the feminine God. And I was studying yesterday and I was studying um, El Shaddai and that's God the provider, but I went deeper in, um, in the Hebrew meaning for Shaddai, it means bosom nurturer. Mm -hmm. And out of that is a wellspring of life. And, and that's really, I believe, a, a feminine quality of God. And so when we think about men and women, we are a reflection of God. We are all made in his image. And so when those two beings come together, that is a reflection of the power of God. That's and so good. we have to labor with men because they provide the balance that women do not have. And we're not meant to be hard and rough. We're meant to be nurturing and loving and to really bring a different type, a different anointing to the situation. And so I would just encourage women to remember men are not the enemy. The spirit is the enemy. That's so good. And let's combat that the spirit of, of oppression um, and lies as well. Mm -hmm. um, and, and really a, a spirit of, um, thank you, God. It, it's really trying to get us um, a spirit of division. And there's unity and power when we come together. Amen. Amen. So let's just take a moment. Let's talk about it. We're from all over cities. Many of you, some of you came in from Vegas. Somebody flew in from New York. We're from all over the country. Tell us a little bit of how we can pray for our cities as a mayor. If you were sitting down with everyone here as a mayor, how can we pray for our city and how can we pray for our country? Um, I would just ask um, everyone, just think about, um, ask God to show you what your city is in need of and ask God and pray, pray for those needs and ask God to, God is a provider. And if we ask him, he'll, he'll provide it. And so pray for the things that you, um, that you don't like, that you think are issues and, and ask God to show you your role in that. Because I believe when we have, when we're drawn to something, when God gives us a burden, um, he's touching our heart and he's propelling us to be able to be a part of that solution. And I can just give you an example from my own life. Um, as I looked at Compton and as I was serving and working there, I had such a heavy, desire on my heart to affect change. And I didn't know then at the time that God was calling me to that position, but I had a heavy burden. And so uh, many of you women, it could be, it doesn't have to be something large. The, the smallest things make a tremendous difference. And so um, just ask God where he can use you and, and just go forward. You don't have to wait for someone to ask you. Um, just we're, we're women. We know we have that intuition where God leads us and, and guides us where we can be effective. And then last question, how do you balance your work faith, not work life, but work faith um, what's, how's that balance for you? How, how do you bring God in? We, we like to call it Jehovah sneaky around here, <laughs> you know, that you bring, you just bring him in with you, but tell us a little bit about how you've been able to bring a faith-based Bible study and those types of things. How do you balance that for yourself? Well, for me, God was really clear to me. Um, and he told me that if you are ashamed of me before men, I'll be ashamed of you before my father in heaven. And so for me, I love God and He's everything to me. He's the foundation and the core of my being. I, I ask him for my decisions. I seek his guidance and wisdom for everything. And I'm not ashamed of it. And so I don't try to force my faith on other people, but I walk in love. And if we would just walk in love, it would draw people to us and they would ask you about your come faith. It's, it's not about wearing a cross on your necklace. It's not about um, telling people come to my church because we are the church. People should be able to have one touch from you, one encounter from you and feel the love and the power of God. Change should break. Amen. I should be open. And so we, we are the power of God walking around the earth. And so um, I, I bring him in respectfully. Um, again, I don't force him on. We have to, we have to be wise and also to be appropriate because there's a time and, and a place for everything. Mm -hmm. Amen. Isn't, I mean, don't you want her as your mayor? I mean, you know, it makes you want to move to Compton just to have her as your mayor. You know what I want to do now, Aisha, is I want us to take a moment. I'm going to have you stand. I'm going to pray over you. But I want to pray over every city here, every city. You know, our, con our country has to come back. And it's one city at a time that we come back, and it's us. We make up the city, which makes up our country. And so as I begin to pray over Asia right now, would you begin to intercede for your mayor and your city? And most churches don't do this. You know, if the churches get back to praying for their cities and believing revival will come to our cities, we'll see revival in our country. Amen. So, Asia, would you stand with me as I just pray over you? Would you extend your hand? If you feel led to stand, feel do that. But begin to just intercede right now for your city. Father God, we come to you right now in the name of Jesus. I pray blessings in Jesus' name over Asia Brown. God, I pray abundance and favor and protection in Jesus' name. I pray that you would give her dreams and visions. God, I believe this city is going to make a mark in our state and in our 
our country. God, I believe that you've raised up Asia for such a time as this, for a day like this. I believe, God, that you've got great um, empires for her to conquer. God, thank you that she is a role model of faith, Father, that she is a woman of character and humility and love and obedience. And so, Father, I pray right now for her city. I pray for Compton. I pray for peace in Compton. We pray that barriers would break down in Compton. We pray that jobs would come to Compton. God, that eyes would be on Compton and everything would lead back to the heart of a mayor that loves God. Father, we pray that over our city right now in Anaheim. We continue to pray over our mayor that will be coming up as we elect the mayor, Father, in Jesus' name. We pray for every city represented. Father, we pray for Holy Spirit revival over our country. We pray for our president. We pray for our government. We pray for our officials. Father, the church would rise up and be the church of Jesus in this day. And everyone said, amen and amen. Thank you, my friend. God bless you. Oh.